This episode of Proper English is brought to you by Italian words in the English language and the idiom, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Hello, I'm Alison. And I'm Dave. And we'd like to welcome you to our podcast, which as you know is called Proper English. English. If you're learning English and you want to know the correct word to describe how you like your vegetables cooked. If you want to know what the Italian for bartender is. If you're puzzled about how to cross the road in America. Then proper English is just the thing for you. Ciao Ali. Ciao Dave. Ciao a tutti. We're in Italy. We're having such a good time doing our own miniature grand tour. Yes, as well as seeing the sights and eating our body weight in gelato. Well, you can. We're visiting some of our students. We have lots of listeners in Italy and we're using the Italian language as our inspiration for today's podcast. Don't panic. We're still all about English. But when my student Aron near Shanghai asked me if we were planning on making an episode in Italy, well, I thought, how can we resist? (laughs) So today we're looking at Italian words that we use in English. Yeah. See, Italian is one of the group of Romance languages. That's languages that are derived from Latin. And this also includes Spanish, French, Romanian Mm -hmm. and, of course, Portuguese. That means that these languages have significant things in common, like similar grammar structures, gender for nouns, and, of course, vocabulary. Now, although the English language has helped itself to a great deal of Romance vocabulary, linguists don't define English as a Romance language. Did you know that, Dave? I did, yeah. Yeah. It's a Germanic language. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's from the Uh Anglo-Saxon. Oh, yeah. So many influences. Of course... English has also been influenced by Celtic languages and ancient Greek too. Silent P. Mm, mm. Psychology, stuff like that. (laughs) Okay, but Italian. Okay. Well, we should start with food then, Dave. Oh, it's a very good place to start. Of course, there's pizza eaten all over the world. Flat dough topped with tomato sauce and cheese and other delicious ingredients. Mm, And then, of course, pasta, Italian noodles. Do you know, in the UK... People have been eating spaghetti since before either of us were born. Unbelievable. I know, when there was a point though, this is great, there was a point when the British were so ignorant about the origins of it that the BBC were able to play a prank on their viewers. It's true. On April the 1st in 1957, April Fool's Day, Mm -hmm. a TV show called Panorama aired a short film apparently showing the harvest of spaghetti from trees in the Italian spring. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) Fortunately... We're a bit more clued up on pasta these days. Mostly. And there are also many more shapes available to buy now too. But oh, there are, yeah, lots. Mm-hmm. Like little, little bow ties and spirals and oh, all sorts of stuff. Now, when you cook your pasta, you might want to serve it al dente. Ah, yes. Not overcooked and slimy. No. Literally, al dente means to the tooth. So when you're serving pasta or rice, it means that it will be firm to the tooth when you bite into it. And you can also use al dente when you're talking about cooking vegetables. Mm -hmm. Broccoli, for instance. Ah. Now there's a thing. Delicious green vegetable, like little green trees. But did you know that broccoli was an Italian word? I'd never thought about it before. But it seems obvious, doesn't it, once you say it? Oh, I love it. And coffee. We're very influenced by Italian coffee culture in the UK. We can drink espresso, macchiato and cappuccino. Oh, yeah. Now, in a cafe, the person who makes your coffee using the big fancy machine... (laughs) That person's called a barista. And in Italy, the word barista is also used to mean a bartender. Mm -hmm, hmm. And so uh, when we get decent summer's day in the UK, we want to to eat outside. And we might say, oh, we're eating al fresco. For an Italian, though, that's just referring to being in the fresh air, apparently. Yeah, well, there you go. Uh, You don't do it very often in the UK, though, to be honest. Sadly. 
Italian culture has had an enormous influence on the arts in Europe and beyond. So many incredible artists and composers. Mm. Domenico Scarlatti, Puccini, Rossini, Vivaldi. Oh, one of my favourites. Scarlatti's my favourite, I've uh -huh. got to say. So, we use Italian terms in music. Oh, yes, yeah, and ones that really do sound Italian, like Allegretto and Crescendo, although we don't attempt an Italian accent when we say it. No. Um, but also words that I hadn't thought of much before, like concert and well, yeah. opera. Opera? Ah. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. I absolutely didn't know that. I kind of guessed concert from concerto. Yep. And that's, you know, kind of Italian origin, I guess. Yeah. Oh, and of course, diva uh -huh. uh, and piano, short for piano forte. And also in the arts, ballerina is Italian, although we use the French terminology to describe the dancer's movements. Oh, right, OK. Do you know, it really hadn't dawned on me that so many scientific expressions are Italian or have been adapted from Italian. Influenza. Mm. Nasty little virus. We sometimes shorten that to flu. And another sickness, malaria, mm -hmm. disease transmitted by mosquitoes, everybody knows that, I guess. It literally translates as bad air. Yeah, I guess it was named before they realised the mosquitoes were spreading it and that it wasn't just something to do with the air. Oh, yeah. Then there's volcano, magma and lava. Mm. All Italian words. Mm -hmm. And finally, an Italian word that we use, even though we've altered the meaning a bit, actually. When two people get married, we'll often throw confetti over them. Yeah. And by confetti in the UK, we mean little pieces of coloured paper. And the word confetti in Italian means sugared almonds. I never realised that. Mm. Because you see little packets, little bags of sugared almonds sometimes, you know, they're tied up with a little That's gong ribbon. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I never never really worked that out. Yeah, no, I hadn't. Right, so, well, yeah, so sugared almonds are also associated with weddings. Awesome. The Italian word for confetti paper is coriandoli. And now it's time for Idiom of the Week. Idiom of the Week? Well. We'd be mad not to have used when in Rome do as the Romans do, wouldn't we? Well, that's true. So, this week's idiom of the week is when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it's advice to travellers to stay out of trouble and not to cause offence. Yes, when you're visiting a foreign country, you shouldn't assume that all customs are the same as yours and that all the laws will be the same too. You need to do your research and find out the basics so that you can behave more like a local. Well, yeah. For example, if you want to cross the street in the United States of America, you have to use a designated crossing and wait for the sign that allows you to cross. If you don't, you could face a fine or even get arrested mm. for jaywalking. Mm. And another instance closer to where we are is when you visit the Vatican, you must dress modestly, so you must cover yourself from your shoulders to below your knees. Ah, right. When in Rome. But no shoes. Don't make it complicated. <laughs> and here we are at the end of another episode of Proper English. We hope you've had fun listening in on our conversation. Please tell everyone you know about us. Your friends, your family, anyone who's studying or learning English. And don't forget to like this episode and leave us a nice review and subscribe to us on Podbean. Or Apple Podcasts. Or your favourite podcast app so you never miss an episode. Or you can email us at properenglish or one word at sapo.pt if you have any suggestions for future podcasts or if you just fancy a chat. And of course, you can join us on Instagram or Facebook where you can ask us any questions you might have about English grammar. So until next time, it's goodbye from me. And ciao from me too. Ah. And thank you for listening to Proper English! <laughs>